Hi, Bill here again, uh, doing another uh, video for you about Lyme disease. And I just wanted to uh, kind of go a little further into details of how my symptoms started, how I uh, went through a lot of things before I found out what was going on and found out why I was so sick and, and ultimately finding out it was in fact Lyme disease. So I just wanted to, uh, to kind of go into a little more detail about a lot of that. For any of you that saw my uh, little introductory video that I did, some of this will be a little bit of a repeat, but please uh, bear with me because I'm telling you a lot of this for a couple reasons, which you'll find out once you listen to all this. So uh, I'd say it started for me about two years ago. I started having a lot of weird symptoms. I had a lot of vertigo and dizziness. Um, and I wasn't sure why, what was causing that. I had a lot of fatigue and insomnia and sleep problems. And I've had fatigue for several years, but uh, this was even beyond that, uh, beyond what it normally was. I had a lot of weird um, chest pains and tightness um, around my heart area, not necessarily right in my heart, but it was you know, moved around that area, sometimes up around my uh, armpit area, sometimes more down in my rib cage area. Um, around that time, I also developed way worse allergies than I had ever had before. And a lot of pollen allergies early in the spring. Um, a lot of allergies if I'd be out around anybody that was wearing cologne or perfumes. If I'd go to the grocery store and go to the aisle that has all the Febreze and you know, all that kind of stuff in, I, I noticed that I had bad allergies to a lot of that stuff. So I had a lot of these uh, these uh, symptoms going on for quite a while there. Again, that was about two years ago, almost two years ago. And then one morning, I got up to go to work, and I uh, just felt a little bit strange. I felt like I had a little bit of a fever or something. It was warm, and uh, so I got ready and went to work anyhow, and I'm, I'm driving to work, and all of a sudden, sweat starts just pouring off my head, just pouring down my face. And it was a typical, um, this was in May, so this would have been two years ago, 2015 in May. So I'm driving to work, and this happens, and typical May, Pennsylvania, I live in Pennsylvania, typical May, Pennsylvania spring morning, um, maybe 40s, 50 degrees at the most. So it's cool out. And I'm, you know, in just a light jacket, and all of a sudden I'm sweating like crazy. I get to work, and I pull, I almost pulled off the road a couple times. I was so dizzy, and uh, got to work, and uh, after a while I felt a little bit better. So this happened several times, maybe not quite as bad as it did that initial time, but it happened a bunch of times. Um, and a lot of my symptoms just kept getting worse. My, my allergies got way worse. Um, the chest pains came and went. They, they weren't that bad, but it was a concern to me. It was not something you're used to having is chest pains. Um, I felt warm all the time. I felt like I had a fever almost all the time. Um, and, and the vertigo and dizziness would come and go. It never went away completely. Sometimes really bad, sometimes not quite as bad. So I was worried you know, all these symptoms had me really worried. So I went to the doctor and I thought, well, maybe I've got you know, something going on with my heart. Maybe I got some, something going on with blood sugar, possibly diabetes. So I went to the doctor and he sent me for a lot of blood tests. Um, you name it. Uh, he even sent me for an EKG and the uh, the stress test where you get on the... Uh, the treadmill and, and they actually look at your heart. It looks like you're looking at a sonogram of your heart on the screen. But they said my heart looked fine. Uh, a lot of my blood tests came back normal. They said, they said my uh, cholesterol was a little bit high. Um, actually it was quite high. Which was kind of weird to me because I had been going to the gym, exercising, trying to uh, be healthy, eat, eating really healthy. I had been doing a lot of um, and smoothies and protein shakes and just salads and eating really good for months and so it was kind of strange to me that my cholesterol would be so high so that was an interesting hint there 
I'll touch on that again later. Um, and also, I've been, like I said, I've been trying to be healthy and go to the gym and eat well, and I couldn't lose weight. I, my, my body would just not give up weight for some strange reason. Um, so again, that was about two years ago when all that happened, and the symptoms continued. They just never really went away. Um, so it was about a, a year after all that started, last May, so it would be 2016 in May, that I was out in the spring in, in the woods in, in May, uh, wild mushroom hunting, morel mushroom hunting. And a couple days later, I wake up and I find a tick on my stomach. And he was dug in deep. So you know, I got nervous about Lyme disease. I'd heard about it. Didn't know a whole lot about it, but um, went to the doctor and he said, well, it's too soon to test for it. That takes a few weeks before it'll show up on a test, before the antibodies in your system will show up on a test. So he said, watch out for these symptoms. He gave me a list of symptoms. He said, uh, you don't have a bullseye rash. You're, you're sore there from digging the tick out, but you don't have a bullseye rash, which is a clear sign you know, that for sure you have Lyme if you have that, but I didn't have that. Um, so he said, watch out for the symptoms. I said, hey doctor, that's all the symptoms I've had for the last year. That, you, know, you could never figure out what was wrong with me. Nobody could. He said, okay, let's send you for the test. And it came back positive. So it came back positive that I had Lyme, which is Borrelia, which is the bacteria that's responsible for Lyme. So I did the first uh, three weeks of antibiotics and doxycycline had a little window of, of uh, little window feeling a little bit better there and then it came back even worse and symptoms returned within a week or so after that course of antibiotics so he sent me for another uh, round of antibiotics and that time we tried 30 days and the same thing happened um, it came back worse than ever so um, one thing you'll find out about me in, in all these videos, I'm an engineer, so I research things. Um, so I started looking into this. You know, I didn't know a whole lot about Lyme disease before all this happened. It was never really prevalent, real prevalent that I know of um, until the last several years. It's really seemed like it's really taken off and gotten worse in Pennsylvania. So I started looking into it and researching things and uh, you know, found out found out about uh, the bullseye rash, which I never had. This is one of the points why I'm making this video. I never found I never found a tick on me originally when I had all those symptoms the first time around for the first year. I never knew I had a tick on me, and I never had a bullseye rash. And a year later, lo and behold, I find out I have Lyme disease. So that's pretty much the primary reason why I'm making this video in particular is to show you that you're not, you don't have to see the tick and you don't have to have a bullseye rash to have Lyme disease. Um, if you do the research on it, the, uh, the incidence of Lyme disease, the people that have Lyme disease, uh, they've done research, only about one, less than one third of those people that have been diagnosed with Lyme disease actually saw a tick or found a tick on themselves. And less than half of the people, less than 50% of the people that were diagnosed with Lyme disease ever had a bullseye rash. So that just goes to show that just because you don't have a rash or you never found a tick does not mean that you cannot have Lyme disease. So that's really why I'm doing this video. I, I want to urge anybody that has symptoms that are out of the ordinary, uh, like the list of symptoms that I've given you, that to please think about it. Uh, and look into it. It's, it's not that hard to go get checked out and you'll save yourself a lot of trouble, but the trouble that I went through, I wish I knew back then what I know now, I would have gotten uh, checked out and could have gotten uh, well a lot quicker and, and now uh, it's a different thing. And I'll get into a lot of that in my next video probably, how I um, started into different treatments and started re researching different things like I told you, I, I do a lot of research, so I've, I've learned a lot about this. Um, I don't know it all by any means, but I'm learning all the time. So if there's anything anybody uh, ever needs to know, wants to ask questions of, I'll do my best to 
to help you out with that. That's the other reason why I'm doing these videos is I want to help anybody else either prevent uh, getting Lyme disease, hopefully, and there are definitely ways of doing that, or to actually, uh, once you have it or think you have it, to help you out. So I'll, um, I'll just think about what else I'm going to talk about. You can ask me in the comments to talk about anything you want me to talk about, and I'll do my best. Thank you.